You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for TWIFO. This Week in Futures Options, the program with the name pretty much says it all. We break down the week that was and indeed still is on the Futures Options side of the fence. What's going to make it onto the show? we got to tune in each week. Is it going to be ags? Is it going to be metals, equities, rates, FX? Who knows? Crypto? You never know what's going to make it into the rotation here on TWIFO every week. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the TheOptionsInsider.com. As well as from the ever exciting, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. If I sound a little bit different, listeners, it's because I'm not coming to you from our Chicago studio. No, I'm coming at you from the southern studio here, this time in Nashville. I'm attending the annual Options Industry Conference, a great array of guests coming through our studio to talk with us about all things options this week. But you know what? That doesn't mean there isn't time for a little bit of TWIFO, so we're going to get it in right now, listeners, as we dive right on into the Movers and Shakers Report. It's time to find out what's rallying on the light side and falling to the dark side at CME Group this week. It's time for the Movers and Shakers Report. All right, everybody, welcome to the Movers and Shakers Report, the portion of the show where we break down everything, lighting it up over there at CME Group this week. If you want to see this report for yourselves, follow us over there on Twitter at Options or follow CME Group. We will tweet it out right before showtime. It's one of the few premium reports we give you guys a little bit of a sampler of. If you want to see, of course, the full offering of everything they have on the futures options markets. And spoiler alert, it's a lot. Then head on over to Bantix.com, B-A-N-T-I-X.com, to kick the tires and light the fires on all their updated data. And coming into the start of the show, if you look at this report, listeners, you'll see that it is pretty heavily biased in the red direction this week. I would say about 70-30 red versus green out here, even though there is enough to make 
a top five. And so, you know what? In the spirit of mixing things up, that is where I will begin this week. To the light side we go, listeners. A number five to the light side. We're hanging out in the ags, even though it isn't the livestock realm of the ags. People sometimes forget there's a lot of other components to ags and just corn and wheat and all that fun. There's dairy in there. There's livestock. They even throw softs in there, the lumber. So the ags complex covers a lot of ground out there. And we're starting off there, number five to the light side. Feeder cattle, number four, still hanging out in ags with rough rice up 1.07%. So that was feeder cattle, number five, up 0.91%. Rough rice, number four, up 1.07%. Number three, the old BTC, a.k.a. Bitcoin, up nearly 5% this week. It was number four to the dark side last week, off about 5.5%. So getting back what it gave up last week. That's looks like one of our few dalliances outside of ags here this week. Number two, right back to the ags. It's lean hogs are going out to the livestock up exactly 5% this week. And then the number one spot to the light side, our old friend, the Euro dollars. We see them on the movers and shakers every now and then. They're up 6.15% this week. Of course, of the flow, the paper, not there. We know a lot of that has moved on into the three months so far. And for a lot of you who are paying attention to rates, you're really more out on like the 10 year and things like that anyway. So not a lot. In our neck of the woods on the Euro dollars this week, but we shall see what we investigate on the show. Let's keep going out to the dark side now. And man, we're going right back to AGS. Number five, it is oats off 6.07%. It was number four to the upside last week, up about 2%. So interesting couple of weeks for oats. You know the deal right now, about three contracts on the tape for oats. So we're probably not going to be hanging our hat in oats. Number four, the big mover of the AGS complex, it is corn. Off 6.71%. So, man, there are a heck of a lot of eggs. I can't recall the last time I've seen one complex dominate both sides of the movers and shakers so thoroughly. Uh, Number four, corn off 6.71%. Number three, it's KC wheat off 7.11%. Right behind it, number two, the big dog, Chicago wheat, a.k.a. SRW wheat, off 7.57%. It was number five in the other direction last week, up about one and a half percent. And taking the number one spot to the dark side this week, still hanging out in the ags, but moving off to the softs, it is lumber off 14.55%. So lumber taking it on the chin. If you're playing the home game, listeners, there are exactly two (laughs) movers and shakers this week that are not ags. We have Bitcoin and euro dollars so i think spoiler alert we're gonna be spending a lot of time in ags this week it's time to get our hands dirty exploring the latest options trades and trends in corn wheat soybeans and more it's time to talk ags all right everybody let's get to it let's dive right on into the ags this week you know where to go to find this report for yourselves we're nice we give it to you For free, another one of the free offerings from our friends over there at Bantix. You can find it, cmegroup.com slash TWIFO, T-W-I-F-O is the place to go. And lucky for you, not hard to find what we're talking about this week. It's an alpha order list, so ag is going to be right at the top of the list. And we got to start with the big dog listeners. It is corn. Talked about it recently on the show, but outside of that, we haven't had too many opportunities to talk about corn. So always fun to check in with the big dog out there and corn coming into showtime 582 dollars even off 33 and a quarter on that front contract that's going away in about a day (laughs) we'll see where all the paper is this week if it's trading like an equity this week speaking of trading uh, some decent paper on the tape over half a million contracts 524,000 contracts to be precise so another active week out here for the big dog in the ags complex And of that, over half a million contracts, 33.8% coming in the July contract that has about 57 days to go. So refreshingly longer term paper to sink our teeth into for a change. Uh, Zero day is fun. On the analysis front, maybe not as much. Not as much to sink our teeth into there. So always fun to have a little bit more time uh, to analyze and to work with here. The future out there still about 582, so no, no change there. In terms of the vol, you might be asking yourself, self, what is the July vol in corn right now? And it's at about almost a 24. 
about 23 and three quarters, up about two points this week. So getting a little bit frothier, getting a little bit juicier out there on the call, on the call, on the corn vol front listeners. And for skew, last week the puts were where the action was, about two and a half percent bid. This week they're pretty much flat, so all that has pretty much evaporated. The calls last week, half a percent rich. This week, one percent rich. So not a huge bias in either direction this week. Pretty much flat to the puts and a little over one point premium to the calls. So I would hardly call it an aggressive skew in either direction. Let's see. Let's go a little bit farther out just for fun and see what we see. If we go out to, let's say, December, uh, the ags always trade on a little bit of a longer time horizon anyway. If we go out to December, the puts are 2.3% cheap this week, and the calls 3.2% bid. So a little bit more of a bias to the calls longer term, a little bit more of a discount to the puts, but still nothing terribly shocking out here on the term structure this week. Let's see if we can find some shocking paper this week. If you had to guess what the big dog was this week, listen, I said we're hanging out at a 582 on that front future. If you said it was the 640 calls in July, you are the winner, winner, chicken dinner this week. 16,353 going up this week. The big dog actually today, 7,100 today, 5,800 on Monday, 2,300 on Tuesday, 1,100 on Wednesday. Looks like mostly opening with the exception of Wednesday, slight closing paper on Wednesday. So July 640s would not have been my first choice, but hey, that's why we run the numbers to see what actually is going up out here. Looks like right behind it, we have the 620s also going up about 14,000 times. I had the feeling maybe there's some vertical action, and it seems like it does kind of line up there. The 620s doing about 8,300 contracts today, so there could be some 620, 640 vertical action going up today. Uh, in terms of the rest of the week, we also saw 620s trading 3,600 times on Monday. So not quite one-to-one, but there, there could be a little bit of vertical action going up there on Monday as well. 1,100 on Tuesday and only about 700 on Wednesday, but opening throughout the week, so opening on the 720s. So interesting stuff afoot out there. And also we saw about 13,900, so pretty much a tie between the 620 calls and the 600, the par puts also going up this week, 13,900 times. A little bit more even spread of paper on the puts, though. The big day for them, Monday, 4,500, 3,700 on Tuesday, 3,500 today, and 2,100 on Wednesday. Looks like opening on Monday, then closing throughout the rest of the week. So some folks may be bailing on those par puts. Maybe they took them off once we broke through that 600 strike, deciding they got their bang for their buck on their protection and maybe looking to reestablish at a different strike or at another time. Let's also look a little bit farther out. Seems like a little bit down the road. There also was some interesting paper going out to Dees. The 600 calls, also pretty active this week, doing 14,000 300 contracts out there. By the way, the Dees future listeners, 50 points lighter than that front contract. It's 532. We're hanging out at a 582 in that front contract. So the 600 calls, a little bit of a different beast out there in December than in the July or let's say the front month contract listeners. Uh, 600 calls, again, 14,300 of them going up. The big day for those also today. So today a pretty action-packed day for corn. 8,300 going up today, 3,100 on Tuesday, 2,500 on Wednesday, and just a couple of hundred, just a handful on Monday. It does seem like opening earlier in the week. We don't know, obviously, about today's paper, but there are 16,000 contracts open right now on the park calls in December, so that could be some closing, even though, again, kind of interesting timing to be closing December 600 calls right now. But then again, we have seen crazier things out here on the TWIFO show listeners seems like that's the lion's share of the size paper out here in corn but since it's just such an ags palooza this week listeners let's keep on rolling to the other name a lot of people often say and the other name people really have on the top of their mind when they're talking about ags and that is of course chicago wheat an active contract not quite as active as corn Corn, again, over half a million contracts. Chicago wheat right now, about 120,000 contracts. Still a pretty decent amount of paper, all things considered. Where is good old Chicago wheat hanging out this week? $630 and a quarter. It's off 42 and three quarters on the week, or about six and a third percent. And of that, about 120,000 contracts, we saw about 40% going up in the June contract that has about 29 days to go. So we're going to hang our hat out there, listeners. 
What is a vol in wheat? A little bit frothier, a little bit juicier. Almost a 32, about a 31.90, up about 2.85 points on the week. So vol getting a little bit juicier out here in June wheat. In terms of the skew last week, the puts, nobody wanted them. 5.8% cheap. This week, they want them even less, 8.2% cheap. So the put wing crashing in. Let's see what's going on with the calls. Last week, the calls were pretty active, pretty juicy. 8.7% bid, and you know what? They're still pretty much there, 8.6% bid this week. So puts getting markedly cheaper. The calls still holding firm in their bid. So interesting, interesting little commodity skew we have popping up out here. Bid to the upside, discount to the downside. Kind of of intriguing. You know, people always ask, are there different shapes that are suitable for different types of trade? Obviously, this type of Skew setup would be great if you're looking to buy cheap protection or indeed get a nice collar on, get a better premium for the calls than maybe you normally would and buy cheap protection, a cheap puts, juicy calls. That's ideal setup for a nice collar. Of course, you can always do a nice covered call by itself as well. Let's see what's the big dog out here, listeners. In Chicago Wheat this week in the June contract, it was the 700 calls, the par calls, doing 7,300 contracts. They were leading the dance this week. A pretty active contract all week long, even though the big day, about half of that going up on Tuesday, 3,600. 1,400 today, about 1,400 on Monday as well, and almost 1,000 going up on Wednesday. Looks like opening throughout the week. So a lot of opening paper here on the 700 strike out there in June, which again, we're hanging out at 6.30. We just lost almost 43 handles on the week, so I would not have maybe guessed that the 700 calls opening for size would be the big dog out here, but that's again why we run the numbers. And actually, listeners, if we go out to July, we could find an even more active strike. This one actually stealing the crown this week. It got buried in our list here, but it was the July 750s, the seven halves, going up 8,300 times It seems like, now this is more along the lines of what I expect. It seems like folks were bailing, getting the hell out of Dodge on these seven halves all week long, listeners, because the big day for those was Wednesday, 3,700 going up on Wednesday, 2,100 today, 1,300 on Tuesday, 1,000 on Monday. Closing all week long, so folks uh, abandoning the seven half strike out there in July, which again, we're seeing wheat just get clobbered. It makes sense some folks would be Looking to exit some upside call positions out there. Let's keep looking, see if anything else is really lighting up our tape out here, listeners. How about the 620 puts back in June doing about 3,300 contracts? The big day for those today, 1,900. So a pretty active day out here in wheat and, again, in all the ags out here today. And then 1,000 on Tuesday. The rest of the week kind of quiet out here for the 620 puts Let's also look really quickly, see any other size prints out there in July that might be kind of interesting. Yeah, the 700s, the pars, also pretty active, doing about 4,600 contracts. And once again, the big day today, 2,600 today, 1,000 on Wednesday, and the remaining 1,000 kind of scattered between Monday and Tuesday. Looks like opening throughout the, throughout the week pretty much. So closing on the seven halves. Opening on the 700s, not quite the same numbers, obviously, roughly half the volume on the pars that there were in the seven halves, but maybe some folks rolling down to a more reasonable strike, taking the opportunity and the sell-off to roll themselves down to the 700s. Uh, Not to be outdone, though. If you thought 700s or seven halves, not far enough out of the money for your liking, allow me to present the 800s. (laughs) <laughs> also in July, going up 4,200 times this week. Once again, the big day today. Today's the active day for many of the ags we're looking at here today. 1,600 on the tape today, 1,100 on Monday, 800 Wednesday, 700 on Tuesday. Looks like mostly closing earlier in the week. So again, some folks maybe getting the heck out of Dodge on a pretty far out-of-the-money strike. Maybe some of that paper also rolling down to the 700s as well. So there we go, listeners. We have corn. We have Chicago wheat. Let's see what else was lighting it up out here in our movers and shakers. Unfortunately, lumber, a lot of action, not much paper to speak of. Oats, the same deal out there as well. You know what we haven't talked about in the ags for a little while, listeners, and it is continuing to do a lot more paper out there. It's our old friends, the livestock, in particular, 
hashtag hog love. We're going out to the hogs listeners because they actually do some paper now. 36,000 contracts on the tape. Again, lumber, oats, they would kill for these numbers out here. 36,000 contracts out here in the lean hogs this week. Where are lean hogs trading right now? Well, that front May contract, yes, you're still trading May out here in the hogs. That's about 15 days to go. That's at about a 78 right now. Listeners up about 1% on the week, even though the lion's share of the paper, 56% was going up in the June contract. And that future's at about an 89, almost a 90. So that one's up about almost four points on the week. So we're going to hang our hat out there in the June contract. What is the vol out here in Lean Hogs, you might be asking? It's 23 and a half off, about six tenths of a point. So coming in from about a 24 last week down to about a 23.40 now. In terms of skew, last week we had the put 7.2% bid. So folks were loving themselves some puts. And that still remains the case of slightly less this week, 6.1% bid. This week on the puts of calls last week, 3.4% cheap. This week, still cheap, 2.7% cheap. So not a lot of love for the calls and a decent bid for the puts. Intriguing stuff out here in the old lean hogs. Looks like in terms of action, it was the 90 calls, which is, again, pretty much an at-the-money strike now. The 90 calls in June, listeners, doing about 2,600 contracts this week. Again, it doesn't sound like a ton, but... For good old Lean Hogs, is a decent-sized print. The big day was Wednesday. Nearly 1,000 going up on Wednesday. It's like most of that closing. 750 on Monday, 500 on Tuesday, but a little over 300 today. Looks like opening earlier in the week until we get to Wednesday. So a lot of back-and-forth paper on these Lean Hogs. You know, never has been a traditionally retail-friendly product. The underlying, I think a lot of retail listeners find it a little bit archaic, a little bit obtuse. They can't come to grips with it, wrap their heads around it. But that said, there is more flow going up out here. I still think there are better ags for you to be dipping your toes in first. We just talked about a couple of them. We talked about corn. That would certainly be a good starting point for a lot of new ag traders. Certainly when it comes to volume and liquidity, that's an easier starting point than lean hogs. But if for some reason you are determined to make the plunge into the hogs, then... Certainly better doing it now than it was, let's say, a few years ago when hog volume a little bit lighter. Let's keep on rolling through the movers and shakers out here this week. Again, a rough rice never been known for a huge options contributor out here. But you know what can surprise us sometimes, and it certainly is lighting it up from an underlying perspective this week. It's crypto. So let's get to it. It's time to explore the volatile world of Bitcoin, Ether, and more. It's time to talk about crypto. All right, everybody, let's get to it. Let's talk some crypto. Go into that drop down, pop out of AGS, and go down one slot. We're hanging out at the top of the list this week, listeners, uh, for the cryptocurrencies and go into the indexes. We're going to start in the big dog first, the big Bitcoin contract. See how. Things are fearing out there. By the way, if you are intrigued by all things crypto derivatives, you want a whole show maybe about all that fun, then check out the Crypto Rundown. Wherever you're getting this content, if you're subscribed to the full network, you're already getting it. And if you're just listening to Trifo, what are you doing? Check out the full network. You'll be able to get the Crypto Rundown and all the other fun that we do out there. Now, speaking of fun, Bitcoin once again this week flirting with that 30K level, 29,860. As we're coming into the start of the show, up about 2,500 handles or a little over nine, about 9.3% on the week. So, again, Bitcoin giveth and Bitcoin taketh away a week when at least it's given a little bit of that uh, back an hour. I should say, taking some of that back right now. In terms of volume, actually a pretty active week. If you've been listening to this show for a while, you know, in the early days of the big 5X Bitcoin multiplier product. It was kind of hard to talk about. They would do 20 contracts in a week, maybe in a banger week, it would be 200. Now we're talking 2,600 just this week. So that's actually a decently impressive amount of paper, especially you know as we keep flirting with this 30K strike, it does seem like that pivotal psychological level really does drive a lot of interest from a lot of the folks out there. Let's go see what the action was out here this week. Like I said, 2,600 contracts. The big dog, 30% of that coming in the May contract. That still has about 28 days to go, so we'll hang out out there. That May future is actually north of 30,000 right now. 30,000 
and 80 to be precise. So back up north of that pivotal psychological level. What is the vol out here on the CME Bitcoin options? About a 53 and a half. Again, if you know anything about Bitcoin, you've been following it for a while. You know, that's kind of light on the vol front. We have seen it much higher. We've actually seen it obviously in triple digits, not infrequently. So Bitcoin hanging out in the mid to low 50s. Not exactly a rock'em, sock'em robots period from a vol perspective, but maybe that's attractive to you. Maybe that's a time when you're looking at some maybe more long vol, long premium type strategies than perhaps you would have in the past. In terms of skew, not a heck of a lot of bias really uh, in either direction. In fact, it looks like on this May contract we have bids in both directions, which is unique. And again, I would encourage you, if you're intrigued by the skew, check out our Crypto Rundown program uh, this skew setup here on these Bitcoin options may not be what's going on in some of the more liquid contracts. So check those out. Right now we have about a 3% bid to the puts in May and a 3% bid to the calls in May. So pretty much even bids on both wings, which I can assure you is not the setup if you go out to some of the other more liquid contracts, whether it's a bido or whether it's even out there on some of the other venues like Darabit. We are seeing more of a flat skew. It was for a while bid to the puts. We had a bid to the calls over the previous couple of weeks as we shot up towards 30,000. Kind of gave that back, hanging out at flat now. Maybe this re-threatening of 30,000 will get some of that that bid to the call wing back again. And in terms of action out here, it was the 32,000 calls in May doing 200 contracts. Actually, I take that back. It was the 40,000 calls in September. Yes, the September 40,000s leading the dance this week with 400 contracts. That's a big print. That's got to be a vertical. Let's go check, listeners. Looks like... It was the 30,000, 40,000, not quite one-to-one. It was 150 by 200 of that vertical going up on Wednesday, opening everywhere, and then opening again for the same size today. So total of 300 on the 30,000s and 400 on the 40,000s. So hence 700 of our 2,600 contracts going up out here this week. Let's check last week, too, to see how these contracts feared. And about 2,000, 2,100 going up last week as well. So intriguing this volume starting to perk up here in uh, the CME crypto, even on the big contracts. Let's check Ether as well to see if the big Ether 50x multiplier contract, if that is also staying abreast of the big Bitcoin contract. And last week it was pretty quiet, only about 160 contracts on the tape. Uh, This week a little more, doing about 400. But still, uh, the big ETH, for whatever reason, not really resonating with the folks out there. Let's go down out to the micro side. I know for a lot of you, that's where you prefer to play. Size-wise, it's much better for your uh, positions. Micro Bitcoin doing about 2,100 contracts this week out there on CME. And uh, last week, in terms of paper, in a week where things were a little bit active out there, we only saw about 500 contracts on the micro Bitcoin. So again, it's a contract that has a lot of ebbs and flows to it. Same deal with the micro Ether. We've seen days when it's really active. And last week was pretty active. 6,200 contracts going up on the tape last week. Is that the case again this week? Are we seeing more action out there in micro ether? The answer is kind of 2,300 contracts on the tape this week. So this seems to be a week where the micro ether once again kind of taking it off. Why are you not trading these product listeners? I'm curious because it does seem like there is a little bit of reticence to pull the trigger on the CME micros. What is it that's keeping you from pulling the trigger on these products? We want to hear from you. Speaking of hearing from you folks, it's time to do a real quick Futures Options Feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for Futures Options Feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at the options You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider Radio Network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. All right, listeners, welcome to the Futures Options Feedback, the portion of the show where you folks take the range, your questions, your comments. In addition to sending in your thoughts on maybe why or why you aren't trading the micros out there on the crypto side on CME, we also have a great question of the week 
where we're taking your pulse on the issue of the day. Everything these days, listeners, it's all about zero day. It's all about zero day vol, zero day trading. Everyone on this conference here this week is obsessed with all things zero day. You can't get away from it, including the launch now of the one day VIX, a single day measure of volatility. It's a contentious idea. Some folks think it's kind of crazy. Other folks think it has some utility. So we put it out to you folks. You are the ultimate arbiters at the end of the day. Is this one day VIX? Does it have legs? Is it useful for you? Or is it somewhat meaningless? Uh, Get on into at options on Twitter to make your voice heard. Listeners, right now, a little over three quarters of you, 77.1% saying, yeah, it's just another meaningless number that's going to clutter up my trading screen. I don't really see a lot of utility in it. Only 22.9% of you saying, yeah, we like this. We're going to get some value out of this. Get over there at options to make your voice heard. If you agree or if you disagree, get in there, make your voice heard. All right, that is going to do it for us on an abbreviated episode of Twifo here from the Southern Studio at the Options Industry Conference. Stay tuned to us on the pro side and on the on-demand side. More content coming your way. Some of my interviews are already hitting the pro side, so you folks are already getting it there. That'll start trickling, trickling out to the on-demand network over the next couple of weeks. You can also stay tuned, lucky folks, because we like you, you can also stay tuned to the panel content. So if you couldn't make it down here to OIC this week, you couldn't just swing the, shall we say, hefty price tag to register for the conference. We got you covered here. We got you back on the Options Insider Radio Network. We will have all of those panels coming for you folks. They'll be hitting the pro side first and then making its way out to the rest of you on the on-demand side in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that as well. And you know what? Extra goodness in store for you because we're not done yet here from the Southern Studio today. Coming at you in about an hour from now, we will be back. Mr. Kevin Davitt will be joining me live here in person in the studio to do a special early edition of Volatility Views from the Southern Studio. So stay tuned for that. And of course, we're back again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Another episode of This Week in Futures Options. Stay safe out there. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This broadcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute trading advice or the solicitation of purchases or sale of any futures or options. The rulebook of the applicable exchange should be consulted as the authoritative source on all current contract specifications. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.